but this is a blacksmith cart. Half of this on this side are hammers that I strike with. On this side are tools that are struck with a hammer. Uh, flatters and smoothers, cutters and punches, things of that nature. And then at either end there are tongs of one type or another. Um, a lot of them I make myself. And here is an anvil. This is my small anvil at uh, 100 pounds. You're working with hot material, sometimes large, sometimes small. Well, when you're working with pieces of metal that are small, you have to get to the anvil pretty quickly. So you want to be no more than one step away from your work. So here I have my, the mouth of my furnace. I'm literally one step. Um, when I pull it out of there, I'm one step from my power handle. Or I'm one step from my press. So when you pull, as soon as you pull the metal out of the furnace, the clock starts and you only, you only got literally seconds to start your work. The smaller the piece, the less time you have. You know, a lot of times people think that you use big hammers all the time and actually you don't. Little work, little hammer. So what I want to do here is I want to get all this stuff collected before I even start my fire. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make this letter opener without using any electricity. A blacksmith will usually start off with a known, a known length of material. And I'll get my chalk or my sandstone, soapstone. And I'll take off about six inches of material. We'll start cutting in here. And you can see if you come up close here, how this oil is literally boiling off. See that? Yeah. That surface of that cut is probably right around 300 degrees. It is so hot, it's boiling off that lube oil. And if you're hacksawing so hard that you can't hold a conversation, you're working too hard. So, what I tell my students, work smart, not hard, don't hold your breath. So I've got a little piece of material there, enough to make a letter opener out of. And this is 3 8 inch square, mild steel. Knock this off because you don't want to have any loose ends. You want to have a clean piece to work with. So I'm going to make this piece entirely with hand tools. We have to get a starting point on it. So when any time I'm making whether it's a leaf, a fence picket, a knife blade, or a letter opener, I always start off by making a point. So, if you want your work to stay even, you have to work it evenly. You can see I've got kind of a pyramid shaped point on there now. But you can see it's a little bit skewed to one side. See how it's up there a little bit? Well, that's no problem. It's an easy fix. See, I just straightened that point out some. What I'm trying to do is get it to play out evenly. So we got a nice clean piece of metal there. Now I'm going to forge the blade. So since I want to get maximum width out of that, instead of hitting it here, I'm going to turn it on its edge because I'll get an additional maybe 20% of width on that. I'm trying 
trying to do is make an effort to strike the same number of blows on each side. You'll see that metal white. Notice that I'm moving the work piece, not the hammer. See that? Yeah. And you'll start to see a line forge in the center. See that? It's very subtle. Yep. Um, that's how you forge a, a double-edged sword blade. It's the same technique, basically. So I'm just going to dress that tip up a little bit, but that blade is essentially done. And I want symmetry. I'm going to mark off a section to put the twist or the curl. So I'm using what's called a half face blow to put a shoulder in there, see? We had a nice deep shoulder in there. That's a fairly well polished piece of metal. It's not too rough. Right. So that's what you want to shoot for. You not only do you have to control the shape of the metal, but where a lot of blacksmiths um, drop the ball is they're not maintaining surface quality. And that was the hallmark of the old European smiths, not disfiguring their material. So, when you're using an oxyacetylene torch, what you want to do is you adjust it. You can see there's a bunch of smoke coming off there, so I want to adjust that out. So the sooting just stops, and it's feathery at the end. Then you add your oxygen. And then what you do is you start heating up the piece you want to twist. And it won't take very long because there's to twist it because there's only a little section that needs to be twisted. So then I put a twist on that. Just enough to go around once. See, we got a nice little twist in there, see? So now we're going to roll our scroll. Now notice that there's not a lot of scale forming on this. And that's deliberate because at this phase of the game, I don't want to compromise my surface quality. trying to do is get it to roll over nice and even. So you kind of have to coax it a little. get down to some hand work. This is a half round file with double cut teeth. So this is the file that you use when you want to take material off quickly. 
And also it has a half round body on it. You can see that um, it allows you to follow a curve in a way that you can't with a cornered file. So it's a real good way to do. And so what I do when I'm doing this kind of work is I will start with my file on one corner. See that line that I forged in serves as our guide, as our file guide. And you just work it in. And the keys of success here is you, you wanna be patient. So that's my first grade of file, see? So on this file, I'm just kind of cruising along because I'm not really aggressively hogging off metal like I was doing earlier. This is finishing work. And this is done with what's called a second cut file. The teeth are finer, smaller, and sharper than the double cut file. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm scratch farming. I'm cutting out all of the prior marks from the coarser file. And that's typically the, the logic behind most finishing of knives is you're basically uh, scratch farming the crocus cloth. So you develop a feel for this. And what we're gonna do is we're going to produce a finish on this that is kind of pearly gray gonna be mostly free of scratches if we're fortunate, um, but it'll be pearly gray. So what I do is I put some oil on that blade because it keeps the grits from falling off. So I've got like a paste where the grits are held against the workpiece without falling off. It's one of those work smart, not hard kind of things. So as you go along, you start to feel the metal resist less. It feels like it's smoothing up. Now you can come around this side and you can see how it's produced a pearly gray finish on that. So I'm wiping that down. A lot of times I'll spray a little lacquer on this to differentiate the handle, etc. But yeah, that's a... So what you've got is a cross section, see where it's thick in the center, so it's not apt to bend and it tapers towards the edge. And so that's how you wanna do, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff. But it's the same technique regardless, you know, regardless of what you're making, whether it's a letter opener or a big long dagger or whatever else, it's basically the same.